Hey everyone. In this video we're going to examine sling orientations and how those orientations affect the sling's braking strength. So this is a Dyneema loop runner or sling um, and it has a MBS or a minimum braking strength of 22 kilonewtons. So if we were to put this into this position, if we were to imagine that this bottle is a branch or a rock or anything solid that we can loop it around, then we would get the full strength of this loop because in this uh, orientation it you just get the full strength that's just how it is um, <laughs> and if you were to have it in this orientation and you were to let's say put in an overhand knot you would be reducing the strength of this sling by approximately, theoretically, 50%. Especially with Dyneema, it does not like to be bent. Um, it doesn't like sharp, you know, um, bend radiuses. So, if you're working with nylon loops, um, then it might be a little more forgiving, but still, you can always expect that any knot is going to reduce the strength of these things by 50, around 50%. The same goes with rope. If you tie a knot into rope, it's expected to lose 50% of its breaking strength. Um, so, the next orientation that you can have this in is you can do a basket hitch. Now let's pretend this is a strong branch or anything else that's strong, not a rope. Um, use our imaginations for a little bit. So if we basket hitch it like this, then because we're connected to twice as much material, this orientation is going to give us uh, a braking strength that's double the previous orientation that we just looked at. So that one was 22, the same as the actual, you know, stated minimum braking strength of the loop. Um, but this one is going to be, so if it's 22 and the other one, this is going to be 44, theoretically. It could break lower or higher, um, but it'll be right around 44 kilonewtons. Um, next, we can double up this, and we can go double here, and then double this up like that and now we're using four times as much material as the first and so this can be expected to have theoretically 88 kilonewtons for braking strength and we're using a 22 kilonewton uh, loop so, that's pretty good to know if you're able to do this. You know, it can create strength where you otherwise might not have it. So now, the next orientation is a lot of people do this when they want to just get rid of slack in the 
loop. So they'll bring it around one, two, as many times as they want just to reduce the length. And then they'll connect it here. So this um, this is just as strong as the basket hitch formation. So this is also double the strength of the very first one. So it's theoretically 44 kilonewtons with a 22 kilonewton loop. And then finally, last orientation is to girth hitch it. And that is when you take the loop, bring it through itself, and you pull it. And you connect to the end here. This formation will immediately reduce the braking strength by as much, or theoretically, as much as 50%. Well, theoretically 50%, it could be more or less, um, but it'll be right around 50%. And so, this is good to know when running your calculations. So this would be 11 kilonewtons braking strength for a 22 kilonewton loop. Um, now, the other thing you need to consider is If you're, you know, if you're basket hitching um, one of these, and so this is double the, so this will be, you know, 22 kilonewton loop. This is going to be now uh, 44 kilonewtons as far as braking strength, but this carabiner breaks at 25 kilonewtons. So, you know, at this point, would it really be worth it to double this over again to get four times the amount? Probably not, um, because the weak link is not the loop anymore, it's the carabiner. So, anyways, those are some formations, some thoughts. Um, and some theoretical numbers for you to keep in mind when using your loops and your, you know, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit like or subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.